All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Jessica Cox, who is in Tucson, Arizona. How are you doing, Jessica? Doing good. It's warm here in Tucson, but we're doing good. Excellent, excellent. And and Jessica has a has a you know, a, a, a very inspiring background as somebody, you know, born without arms, but became fascinated by the limitless ways the human body can adjust to a variety of circumstances. And so you learn to overcome these physical barriers and do things with other parts of your body, you know, your legs and that. And you have shared this story and your insights about how people can overcome what they seem like impossible odds, but also just in, in regular thinking, how we can go from always seeing obstacles to seeing opportunities and, and overcoming that. So you call it the art of possible thinking as opposed to impossible thinking. So um, Jessica, what can people, when, when somebody looks at you and thinks, oh my goodness, look at all the things that you've done and, and, the, and the obstacles that you've overcome, how can people take what your experience and relate it to themselves about how they can overcome challenges in their own life? I think that people have to understand that we have an amazing way of adapting and how we have an amazing way to find a solution, uh, regardless of our circumstances. Because for me, I happen to be born without arms, but someone else might have some kind of challenge that's not visual uh, and it may not be, you know, obvious to the eye, but they still challenge are challenged every day, whether it's an emotional challenge or an attitudinal barrier or whatever it is that they're faced with. And it's really, I think, an, an example. And I hope I can only hope I can bring home that message to others that really they can accomplish their own impossibilities and they can do great things with a, one, a wonderful mindset, with a positive attitude and really breaking down the challenge in the kind of a a way that I do when I face challenges and obstacles. So um, what, what is that way that you do? Because a lot of I know a lot of people will sort of listen and they go, yes, okay, I don't have the same kind of challenges that Jessica has. And I know I should be able to be more positive and, and be and be more kind of solution oriented. But I just don't know how to I don't know how to change my mindset. Well, I came up with possible, uh, possible thinking because of the way in which I approach life. And I have the saying, think outside the shoe. And that is probably what helps break down the strategy, breaks down this approach. Because I think about shoe, and uh, actually it goes back to the story of how I learned how to tie my shoes. So mm -hmm. because my toes and my feet have become my hands and my fingers, I learned to tie my laces with my feet outside of the shoe. And that whole approach to finding a way is, is now um, has turned into think outside the shoe, where shoe represents S, self-limiting beliefs, H, habits, O, overcomplication, and E, excuses. And I use the acronym THINK, T-H-I-N-K, to break down the strategy of how to think outside of the shoe. And, and T is for tear up the challenge. H is for heightened awareness. I is insist on finding a way. N is for nonstop reevaluation, repurposing, or reinventing. And K, one of the most important ones, kick out the habit of excuses. And so it's an easy way to break it down to, to remember it, but it's essentially that approach to insisting on finding a way regardless of the circumstance. So what was T again at the start? T is for tear up the challenge. And so when you say tear up down. the challenge, what do you mean by that? Just break it down, is it? It's just about breaking it down because I think about um, obstacles we face and sometimes we really focus on the intimidating task at hand or at foot, I should say. And we think about it in this big, really uh, impossible task. But if we start to dissect it and break it down into these little steps that we have to do and take one little step closer to that end goal every day, it's amazing how it becomes possible. Yeah, no, it's like that old saying, what is it, even a thousand mile journey begins with one step. I love that one. I, I, yeah, I have another quote that's an old one, an elephant can be eaten one bite at a time. Yeah, no, ab absolutely, absolutely. And then what was H? H is for heightened awareness. And, and so um, what, what do you mean by, by heightened awareness? What I mean by that is sometimes uh, we kind of 
are set in our way of thinking. It's almost like a habit or a way of doing things we go through every day, doing it the same way. But heightening our awareness is really elevating our awareness of what's around us, whether it's repurposing a tool to make it function in a way that we need it to, whether it's re uh, using the resources as in the people around us to help accomplish a goal. It's just being aware of your surroundings, really using your surroundings, uh, whether it's people or tools or whatever it is you have, to be able to accomplish that goal. Yeah, no, I love that because I, um, I do think that a lot of times, you know, people just um, just become kind of oblivious to what's around them. Plus, we also live in this kind of shortcut, easy culture where we think that there's always something new to fix something rather than leveraging the things that are at hand, or as you say, the people are at hand. Uh, so I think that idea of heightened awareness is, is a very powerful one because, yeah, we have so much that's at our fingertips or our toe tips or whatever that's around us that we we are oblivious to a lot of the times. It's true, yes. Yeah. And what was I? And I is almost like the mantra of my life, insist on finding a way. And that's something that can apply be applied to anyone. I think it's just too easy to give up. Uh, it's just an easy way out to say, oh, I can't do it. And the moment we yeah. do that, we set ourselves up for failure, but we're so inclined to do that so easily so soon that we don't give ourselves a chance to work hard and work through a challenge yeah and again like i said i mean i think unfortunately there's a somewhat pervasive culture now of like if it's not easy if it doesn't happen instantly then i just give up and, and move on and i think that that's uh that's a shame because nothing good in life ever comes without some trial and error, without some trial and tribulation, without working through. It's just, it never happens, never rarely or whatever happens first time. And you have to have some level of determination and, and resilience. And I love that too. Yeah. And I, I always um, say as my own personal quote is, you know, the accomplishment is all the more meaningful when you're able to work really hard for it. It takes a lot longer, but in the end, you feel more accomplished because you did it and, and, you, and you worked through all the obstacles. Yeah, yeah, like you earned it. <laughs> yes. And then N? N is nonstop reevaluation, repurposing, or if you have to reinvent. And that is something that um, probably is applied to my life because of the fact that uh, I've had to invent some things and, and ways about doing things in order to accomplish something and repurposing is something that I've done. For example, I share the, the dressing tool that I use. It was actually originally a windshield repairman's tool and it was a tool used to remove cracked windshields or broken windshields in the shop. But for me, I suction that windshield uh, repair tool on the side of my dresser and it's essentially a hook and I hang my clothing on the hook step in my clothing and wiggle my way in. So I've essentially repurposed a tool. It's initial, I mean, it's original intention was not to help me get dressed, but now I'm able to use it to fulfill a function. And it's just keeping that mindset that we can repurpose tools around us. There, are, There's a lot of things around us that we can be creative with. Um, we, If we have to, uh, we can reinvent a new way of doing things. Um, for me, I had the challenge of pushing a shopping cart. And I remember figuring out an, a way to do that was to use a, a belt and to attach a little hook onto the belt so that I could attach myself to the shopping cart and move it around the grocery store. But I mean, that's just a simple tool that I use, a shopping belt. But I also do other things like reinventing a new way to do Taekwondo. And it's really oh. about taking a step back and, and saying, you know, I can reinvent a way to, to do something else. Yeah, that's, um, that's fantastic. Um, I wasn't aware of the Taekwondo because I am actually the third degree black belt in Taekwondo myself and uh, have, uh, have been doing Taekwondo with my, uh, with my son. I started him in Taekwondo. I used to do Taekwondo years ago and then I started him when he was three and a half and he's now 15, nearly 16. So wow. it's been a great journey. And so what have you done, to tell, for instance, in, in, in Taekwondo? I mean, obviously there's a lot of legs involved, but how have you managed to to do a martial art and and get around, you know, maybe that, you know, the balance and all that and the, the you know, without the arms, obviously. Well, one of the things that what I started out Taekwondo, uh, not as young as your son, which is amazing mm -hmm. when you start young. I was 10 when I first started. And when I went into the school, the instructor had one um, requirement. He said, as long as you keep a good attitude and keeping nice. that good attitude, we went through and essentially 
created custom modifications for every hand movement that uh, you would do in Taekwondo, say for example, a punch. We would have an equivalent move that could function in the same way and it would be like a knee strike would mm -hmm. substitute the punch or um, a knife hand strike for me would be a sidekick. So we mm -hmm. went through every move and created a whole new curriculum for someone without the use of their arms and hands. And now it's in place so that anyone else who comes after me and is interested in pursuing Taekwondo without the use of arms, or wants the extra challenge of doing it without arms, they can. And uh, there has been already someone who has joined and used that curriculum for their benefit. And it's been wonderful to do that. It has, and I think that's the that's the fantastic thing about martial arts, and maybe it's the thing that a lot of people don't understand uh, about martial arts is that with martial arts is that your 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 competitor is yourself. That's the person you don't measure. There's always going to be somebody with a with like more experience, a higher belt, all of that kind of stuff. The person that you need to compete against every day in martial arts is yourself. And the other people are there to help you on your journey, company on your journey, but it's, all, it's a personal journey. And I think what you've just outlined there is just a fantastic example of, of a, a personal journey and modifying something to fit your journey. Yes. yes. Yeah, that's very inspiring. And I think we're on to K, is it? Yes, K. K is kick out the habit of excuses. And that is pretty straightforward. We all can come up with an excuse, no matter who we are, no matter what we're challenged with. We can list off excuses. I can sit here for days listing off excuses. But if we start to eliminate that from our lives, it's amazing how much further we'll get by not allowing that little uh, excuse to pop up every now and then whenever we wanna do something and, and to be able to set our mind on something and eliminate those excuses. Yeah, because let's face it, I mean, as human beings, we're incredibly creative when it comes to excuses. And, and as you say, we can spend hours coming up with all oh, lots and lots of plausible excuses why we can't do something. But if we put the same, as you say, if you kick out the excuses and, and you put the same energy into figuring out how to, to do something, it's, it's quite transformative. It truly is. Yes. Yeah. And let's just go back to thinking outside the shoe, because I, lo I love that. And um, what was that an ac acronym again? So what was the S for? Um, S is for self-limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. So yeah. so just talk about self-limiting beliefs, because I think that's a, I think that's something that, you know, everybody suffers from in, in, to one degree or another. And I think a lot of times we underestimate our own potential and our own skills and, and our own abilities. And we're afraid to, to put ourselves out there because we think we're going to get found out. It's like that imposter syndrome that I've talked to other, some other people about. But we come up all, again with all these ways of kind of holding ourselves back. So how do you break a self-limiting belief? It is a challenge. It's a lot harder than you than you know we mm -hmm. think. It's 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 something that's a part of our interpretation of life. It's it's almost a story that we live because um, unless you're very fortunate, every single person is either limited by other people who put limitations on them, and then that becomes part of our self talk. Uh, we start to hear someone like maybe a parent or someone who is older when we're a child saying, "Oh, you'll never be able to do that," or "You'll mm -hmm. never be able to go to college." Or, have a normal life. And those things we, we believe as young people because we're so impressionable. And those, are, those become our self-limiting beliefs, the beliefs that people have projected onto us. And it's, it's really hard to break those patterns at times, but it's really about bringing the awareness that that is not something that is true of us. We can do great things and we have to almost like change that self-talk in a way that we can believe that those limiting beliefs were either something we interpreted and put it on, on ourselves, but we can also eliminate and we can switch that self-talk around. And I think you're a hundred percent, I mean, because I think a lot of them are, are self-imposed or we've, as you say, we've interpreted in a particular way. Maybe there's been a throwaway comment by somebody and it wasn't even meant in that way, but we've taken it as a, as a, direct, uh, as a direct statement of our, our, our abilities. And then the H? H is habits. We talked a little bit about that and how sure. we are really so used to doing things a certain way that we don't want to break away from the norm. We're hesitant to do so. 
but that is when we start to stretch ourselves and we can break away from our habits and say, you know, it doesn't have to be done this way. We don't have to yeah. go through this the same way everyone else does it. And that's, that's important is to break away from those habits. No, and absolutely. And, you know, and habits can be broken. I mean, people do, you know, there's examples of that happening all the time. It just takes a little bit of effort and, and recognizing that something is a habit to begin with, because sometimes we don't even recognize the habits we have. Yeah, they're so part of us, we don't even think of it as a habit. Exactly. And then the O? O is for overcomplication. And that kind of uh, talks, uh, when I was talking a bit about how we make things so intimidating, we overcomplicate it. And if you're a perfectionist, uh, it also, you know, like myself, which I experienced perfectionism growing up, is that I would push something off because of the fact that there was just too much anxiety to making it perfect. That overcomplication, the, the, the need to be perfect, that is what helps. Uh, I mean, I, it doesn't help, but it, it causes us to avoid tackling a challenge. Yeah. No, I, I love that. I mean, the, the two things. I mean, perfectionism, as we know, Per, um, perfection is unattainable. So if you're a perfectionist, in some ways, it actually helps you avoid ever completing a task um, because you can't get it to absolute perfection. And the other thing is overcomplication. This is, a, this is one that fascinates me is that, is that human beings were hardwired to overcomplicate. It's like whenever uh, you, you maybe a meeting with a group of people at work and you're talking about this, this problem or whatever, people immediately go into solution mode, but then they immediately start thinking about all the exceptions that could happen. And, you know, so, but what, but what if this, but what if that, rather than just say, let's build it to the best, let's, let's plot out the best case scenario and then we'll deal with the exceptions later. It's like people just want to complicate and, and it is something that you have to deliberately overcome and stop doing and figure out how to simplify things. Yes, it's true. Going back yeah. to the basics. So yeah, exactly. And then E, and E is, ex is um, excuses. And that's basically like uh, the acronym to think is, is the excuses that rule our lives. You know, I don't have time, I can't afford it, or, you know, everything that we have in our life to just eliminate, to, to basically avoid tackling on whatever it is we want to do. Yeah, no, absolutely. And again, like we said, I mean, we're so good at coming up with excuses. Um, but I love that. And I love that. Uh, and I love that whole um, analogy about, you know, the fact that you learned how to tie your shoes before you put them on, because people would say, we well, have to put your shoes on first, right before you tie them. You're like, no, I can tie them first and then put them on, you know, and say, yeah, of course, that makes sense. You can do that, too. Um, so just the the you know turning things on it on its head. Um, listen, Jessica, this has been fantastic. Thank you. This is very inspirational, and I think very. I love those acronyms. Very very useful. Um, Jessica Cox. So all of Jessica's information will be in her contributor bio below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. I am a speaker. I've spoken in twenty seven countries around the world. I am a coach. I'm an author. My book has, um, it's on uh, Amazon, as yeah. well as a documentary that has aired in 80 countries around the world on National Geographic. So anyone who would like to follow me, you can follow me on Facebook as well and all my other social media handles, but Facebook is the big one. Yeah, listen then, again, thank you very much. This has been, uh, there's incredible content in here. I hope people go and check out Jessica and think through uh, what you've spoken about today and realize, you know, that everybody has so much more potential than probably they give themselves credit for. So there's a lot more out there that you can achieve if you put your mind to it. Uh, my name is John Goldham from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline and CRM. Thanks again, Jessica, and I'll see the rest of you for another interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.